This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is indeed live from Studio C. Your day-to-day play-by-play presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Thursday, September 8th, wherever and however you've chosen to connect, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a, a man who I believe for the first time in his life is maybe considering buying a red T-shirt, Jerem Jordan. Well, I do associate with a team that has red. It's not that team up north, but it's a team to the northwest uh, rugby team. Uh, but <laughs> Arkansas, <laughs> they're selling a shirt. Again, Razorbacks, Pig Suey, they love it. Rise and snout. The hogs are out. <laughs> this is well played. They're, they're selling this T-shirt for fans from Arkansas that had come out and watch the game in Provo. That is that is hilarious. Yeah, no, that's very well played. I love that. That's that's super funny. And the fact that BYU is going to play at Arkansas next year in Game Three. Hey, little little two game series here. Let's go. What well, well played, Mauer. Okay, since the inception of BYU Sports Nation nine years ago, have you purchased anything? that resembles red in terms of clothing or a shirt. Like a red dominant shirt? Like purchase, because I know you, the Warriors are your team. They're your rugby, awesome. You're but you're given, you're given that stuff. So have you True. purchased True. anything red? No. Uh, the killer shirt had, it was all yellow with some red. But okay, it's like, no. Eh, I'm fine. It's like a red base. Isn't it weird? No. It's no weird. Like you see it and you're like, Not I, I, I can't buy it. I can't buy it. I, I feel something <laughs> when... That thought occurs. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's very real. It's very real. Let's, let's play Find the Red. Oh, here. You can, yeah, let's exactly. Let's play Find the Red. There yeah, ain't exactly. no red. That's orange. Orange. That's, that's orange. Brown and orange. Brown and football. Orange, orange brown, basketball. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no red. Nope. It's, nope. Un, it's unbelievable. But it's, you're right. It's a very real feeling. It's a thing. Hey, part of me is happy BYU Hawaii Cut Athletics, just so there's no question. No, yeah. like Because we used to I, say, hey, red for the seaside. Full disclosure, I wish BYU Hawaii still had athletics. Well, Jerem, and, and the Ricks Vikings, rise and snout oh for goodness. today's show. Get lineup. out of here. It's not about Arkansas yet. It's about Baylor. What's different about this year for BYU football compared to what the Cougars faced last year in Waco against Baylor? We will discuss all of the little differences and nuances that just may turn things in favor of your Cougars. Plus, the Quiz Bowl is one thing, Jerem. Quiz Bowl on NBC with the Mannings is another thing. We're going to talk to two BYU students who competed on the National Collegiate Quiz Bowl show with Peyton and Cooper Manning hosting fantastic stuff on the way there. And the voice of the Baylor Bears, John Morris, will join us. We should probably quiz him too, right? I mean, it's, should we make On this, Baylor Should we make stuff? this quiz team? Yeah. On Brigham Young? Let's do it. Bring on today's BYU Sports Station headlines. Got a ranked matchup between number 21 BYU and number 9 Baylor two days away. Cougar offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick was asked about an update on the status of BYU receivers Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney. I wouldn't tell you if I knew, uh, but I don't know yet. And probably be a, probably be a game time decision. Did they practice this week at all? I'm not answering that. Well then. For the latest on those two, check out BYU Sports Nation Game Day on BYU TV and, of course, Cougar Free Game Live on BYU Radio Saturday starting at 8 Eastern time. I would like to pull that part of A-Rod and just answer. I'm not answering any. that. I wouldn't tell you even if I knew. I love it. <laughs> hey, like, you got to give he him credit. Know. He doesn't mince words. Like, we want we want to know, but, like, he's under no obligation to give the answer. That's I'm going to use that on my kids, too. His prerogative. Can I stay up later? No. you got to go to bed. Why? I don't want to answer I'm that. Not, I'm I wouldn't not even tell that. you if you find uh, your the 13th ranked BYU women's soccer. Speaking of rise and snout, Jerem, I guess oh. Arkansas tonight? fans that are watching soccer tonight at Southfield could wear okay. those t-shirts because the Cougars host the Razorbacks. Are there going to be like 12 of those people? 10 Eastern, live on BYU TV, BYU Radio, and the BYU TV app. They actually push this game an hour because it's so hot in the Provo area. It is stinking hot. It's it's projected to be 90 degrees at 8 o'clock at night when this game kicks up. What is this, Mesa? This Pretty wild. Crazy. One time at midnight, I walked out of a Diamondbacks game, and it was 100 degrees. Just, it's just not right. Everyone in the Valley right now is like, that's like, an, uh, that's like a Tuesday. What are you right. talking about? By the way, in the Arkansas game last year, BYU kicked the ball back. It almost went into the goal. Cassidy Smith jumped on it with her hands. That's against the rules. 
Aren't that a free kick from the six where all the BYU, it's not a penalty, all the BYU players were lined up yes. on the goal line and they <laughs> scored it. They, it's an indirect, you passed your team and they scored a goal. It was the weirdest Strange thing ever. Strange scenario. BYU is seeking some vengeance. Yes. Uh, the Cougars number 13, Arkansas just outside the top 25, sneaky game. 10th ranked women's volleyball plays a massive road game at 5th ranked Georgia Tech tonight on the ACC Network Extra and the Cougars play number 8, Ohio State tomorrow. I believe BYU's got to get at least a split out of this. Uh, so huge matches tonight and tomorrow for women's volleyball. Well, stay with the volleyball theme. Ronnie Jones Perry, one of the all-time greats for the BYU women's program, helped Team USA sweep Cuba three sets to none yesterday at the Pan American Cup. She had 11 points, nine kills, a block, and an ace. The U.S. women will play the Dominican Republic, who are unbeaten in their final round-robin match today, 7 Eastern, live streamed on YouTube. Kyle Collinsworth is named a captain for his new team in Japan. Sun and Neo Phoenix. Sources close to the situation overheard Collinsworth yell, 100 push-ups a day, Whoa. as he received the news. He played last season with the Seahorses Mikawa. First game is in three weeks. Good luck. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's different this time around for BYU football as they now host the ninth-ranked Baylor Bears in Provo, Utah? BYU ran into a buzzsaw in Waco last year. A late touchdown made the final score a little bit more respectable, but let's face it, BYU got run over by the Baylor Bears, Abram Smith, and that huge offensive line. He became Abraham in that game. The Cougars are now, depending on which expert you talk to and which line you look at, somewhere between a three-and-a-half and, and four-and-a-half point favorite, Jerem. Wow. This is very interesting because they are ranked 12 spots lower than Baylor. Yes, the game is in Provo, but the defending Big 12 champs are coming to town. So that got us thinking, okay, what is so different about this year other than the location for BYU and Baylor that the Cougars are now a four-and-a-half point favorite after losing by 14 on the road last year. Let's discuss, Jerem, what will be different this year in the BYU-Baylor game. Three things, Spence, maybe four. One, BYU will be able to run the ball better. The Cougars only ran for 67 yards total last year. Most of that came on Jaron Hall's fourth down touchdown run. Yeah, weird. With Ty like Tyler Algier's game, like his with worst Tyler, game. With Tyler Algier on the team in a record-setting season. I believe BYU goes for 150-plus. I do. I think the O-line has improved. I really like BYU's diversity of attack with Chris Brooks and Lopini Katoa. I think we'll see Jaron Hall in the run game a little more than we saw last week. That's number one. Number two, BYU won't be playing from behind most of the game. The Cougars had a lead in this game last year, but uh, after that had to throw the ball quite a bit. It changes play calling, and Baylor ran 20 more plays than BYU. The Cougars could not get off the field. I believe they'll be uh, just fine in that regard. Number three, Dylan Doyle, linebacker for Baylor, will not have a record-setting game like he had last year, which was a linebacker having a receiving, rushing, TD, and a sack in the same game. That was wild. First time in Baylor history. That will not happen. And four, I believe BYU will win the game. I think this will be one of the all-time wins in BYU history in terms of beating a top 10. I think BYU wins this game. I think it's close. As I tweeted out yesterday after our conversation after the show, because we have that, the show continues, just not on the air, that BYU will win the game. And if they do, it's by one score. All five top yes. ten wins have been by one score. Okay, so this will happen. Those are the four differences to me. All right. Uh, I'm going to throw out the fact that, yes, obviously the location is different. The atmosphere is going to be very, very different for BYU in the late game. And some people say it doesn't matter when you play. If you're a better team, you just show up and you play. I think it does matter. I think, I think a night game in Lavelle Edwards Stadium in a season opener is an advantage for BYU, significant advantage. Uh, I don't know how much. Hard significant. To, hard to quantify in points, um, but I'd probably give BYU like a three- or four-point edge just based on the fact that it's late, it's the home opener wow. under the lights at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Okay. okay? So that, that alone will make things at least a little bit different for BYU. I'm with you. I feel like the offensive line for BYU will get a much better push against a good Baylor defensive front. I mean, the, Baylor brings back a ton of guys. They're very capable. I think BYU's offensive line is better than they were last year, and they'll feed off of the emotion of the crowd. And BYU is not going to have a scenario where the, the lead back rushes for 34 yards on 15 carries. Like, that's not going to happen. That's, that's how tough it was for Tyler Algier last year. He was averaging essentially two yards a carry. Like, when did that ever happen in Tyler Algier's career? It did it. Very rare. That will be very different, whether it's Lopini Katoa, it's Chris Brooks. BYU will have 
a much more impactful uh, scenario with the running game. And here's why. Because I think they're so focused on Puka Nakua. Clearly. They, I mean, they're talking about him specifically. Number 12, yeah, yeah, Jaron Hall threw it up to him. He can catch it. We got something for that. Okay. If they're going to drop a little bit more pass coverage down, then there are going to be more opportunities for BYU to run the ball. So that's why a couple of BYU's offensive line being better and Baylor now focused so much, which is why I think Puka Nakua is going to play. He's going to play. Even if BYU, if he's not 100%, he can be used as a very significant decoy. Absolutely. Okay, to distract Baylor. So I feel like that will certainly be different and open up the rush game. Also, BYU is not going to give up over 300 yards rushing on the defensive front. That's not going to That's happen. Not Abram going to happen Smith again. is not walking through the door for Baylor, yep. nor any running back or scenario capable of making that happen on the road. Tristan Ebner was tremendous as well. Had, had Great uh, player. Yeah, he got drafted, another one of their running Great backs. Great player. Abram Smith didn't even get drafted. Yeah, here, here's the thing that's different for Baylor as well that we should mention. Uh, Blake Shapin is, uh, is a better quarterback than Gary Bohannon. Yes. And he is efficient. This guy was the number one shortstop prospect coming out of Louisiana, had committed to Arizona State to play football, decommitted, goes to Baylor. They put him in at the end of the year when they played some huge games against, like, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, uh, uh, Big 12 championship game notably, uh, Sugar Bowl notably. So he's a good player. That is a difference, too, is Gary Bohannon didn't have to beat BYU last year, and he didn't last week either at South Florida. Shape and changes what they can do on offense yes. a little bit more. So that is one thing I am very and keenly aware of, but I, I really like where the secondary is at. I think BYU is ready for this moment because last year's team was tremendous, fizzled out in the bowl game, unfortunately, didn't really pop in the preseason polls. This is a chance to really show on ESPN, late night game, top 10 opponent. Yeah. BYU has a chance in this game to cement itself, its legacy as a team Early in the season, there's a lot of football to be played to elevate or, or de-escalate right from that moment. But if BYU wins this game, it's just the sixth top ten game uh, you've ever Wild. won. Wild. And it's uh, the home opener. And it's the only Big 12 game the year before. And it's after last year getting run over by Baylor. So I think this team has circled this mentally, whether they'll say it out loud or not, and that they will be ready and that they will play well. Listen, th this is going to be th – there's going to be Utah, Arizona State, and even USC 2019 vibes here. What I mean by that is don't look at the box score and assume that everything needs to be clean and easy and nice for yes. BYU to win. This is going to be a game where BYU may not throw for 250. They may not rush for, uh, you know, 200 or whatever. It's going to be a take-care-of-the-ball game. Get some some hard, dirty yards late in the game when it's physical and, and weird. And just win. Like, I do not care most games how BYU wins. And this is one of those. Like, last week it was like, mm, you got to win, I think, convincingly to really feel good about the, sure. the win, the sure. game. South Florida, you're an 11 and a half point favorite. This game, just win, baby, because it's a top 10 team. They are the Big 12 champs. They are the preseason pick to win. They beat you up last year. Defend Lavelle Edwards Stadium. All right, Jerem, li listen to this. Okay, Blake Shapin, has he played in an environment like Lavelle Edwards no. Stadium? Not even close. No, Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl, certainly more of a challenge, but not like this. Great. Not a true road. Not yet. Yeah, neutral game. Okay. More big, of a challenge compared to Big game for sure. Kansas big State game for sure, world. but yeah. not a hostile road environment. Yeah. He's played at Kansas State. Kansas State, Manhattan, is not Provo, home opener, two ranked teams in Provo with 63,000-plus going bonkers. Man, it's not even the best Manhattan. You know what I'm saying? This is his <laughs> first true Little Manhattan. road test. Yep. Okay. We'll, we'll see, see how he, he, we'll see how he shapes up. Uh, see what you did there, Anchor jokes. Boy. Uh, <laughs> anchor dead. Topic two, Brett Yormark, new Big 12 commissioner, continues his tour day new Big 12. They visit to Provo Saturday. Check him out on BYU's and game day, by the way. Yes. At 8 Eastern. He was at uh, Cincinnati recently and asked about conference expansion, what schools would be good additions. He said this, well, I don't want to get into specifics, and I appreciate the question, but obviously going out west is where I would like to go. Entering that fourth time zone, program that has national recognition, one that competes at the highest level in basketball and football, stands for the right things, is a good cultural fit. Because our alignment right now and the like-mindedness of all of our member institutions is fantastic, it's never been better. So I don't want to compromise that, and it's critically important that there's the right cultural fit when you think about coming in and being part of what we're building here, end mm, quote. Mm, Brett, okay. your mark. Okay. I just like him. 
Uh, what school do you think he's talking about? <laughs> That, that naturally was the first question I asked. Okay, I'm reading this. I'm like, okay, he clearly has a school, maybe two in mind, like available, power five level. Like, yes. And, op- why is, and why is it not Utah? The options are very small. <laughs> not on the West Coast. Like, Utah Ooh. doesn't open up that fourth time zone. I'm just zone, trying to bring Utah in. Right? Yeah. Utah doesn't open the fourth time zone. Correct. So clearly he's thinking about a West Coast school. Mm-hmm. Oregon is the first one that floats to the top. First one that came to my mind. Good well. in football and basketball. Yep. Okay. Nice you tradition. You like Blue Mountain basketball last year. Cultural fit. Okay. So Oregon, to me, is the school that he is explaining. And then, may, depending on what time of year it is, because Arizona has their own time zone scenario. <laughs> right. Right. So sometimes Arizona show. Sometimes Arizona is like. An hour behind with Pacific time. My mom lives in Arizona. I never know what time it is. Yeah, it's weird. I have no idea if it's the same time as Mountain. They don't have daylight savings, so maybe Arizona has it right. They also have weird paper size. That's another thing. Okay, conversation for another day. Does Arizona have it right and the rest of the United States doesn't with time zones? Maybe maybe he's talking about the Arizona schools, assuming that they're He said football and basketball. That's true. Arizona State doesn't really qualify for that either. no. It's Oregon. I want to say Stanford, but is Stanford the right cultural fit for the Big 12? That, no, that's a very different um, political it's mindset. Or, it's Oregon, and depending on what time of day well, it is in Arizona, maybe the Arizona schools. Well, and, and Oregon, it's Portland is liberal. The rest of the state is not, so that's interesting. Washington could come to mind as well, a team that competes well. But I think it's clearly Oregon, which he was talking about. Oregon is eyeing the Big Ten for obvious reasons. And so is Washington trying to hitch their wagon yeah, to Oregon. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's interesting. He's, he's being very aggressive. This is a businessman who has entered the college sports game at a higher level now as a commissioner of the Big 12. And this is our guy, man. Listen, BYU hasn't always uh, felt like the commission was their guy. They felt like Carl Benson was their guy. They did not feel like Craig Thompson was their guy in the Mountain West. Um, and, and here comes Brett Yormark, just uh, guns a blazing. Um, open open for, business. for business, right? So we'll we'll see what this means um, if BYU actually, uh, excuse me, the Big 12 actually expands or not. But I thought this would kind of like go away. But he was asked, so he answered. Um, he didn't just bring it up. Yeah. So we'll we'll see where we go. I thought once we got into season, it'd just be like tabled till later. No, yeah. no, no. The playoff expanded in season now between week zero and one. We're still having this conversation. This is this is a big deal. He. He's on the forefront of this, which is what I want as a now fan of the Big 12, of, okay, if there's going to be a move made, it's not going to be for a lack of aggression or preparation or foresight on, on behalf of the league. Intriguing stuff developing, as uh, we said earlier. Brett Yormach <laughs> and the Big 12 are open for business. Puddles, come hang out, man. Uh, some, I can hear a San Diego State fan saying, what about San Diego State? No, no. Our question <laughs> of the day. And why do they sound like Our, they're a 13-year-old kid? Our, I, I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to use Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. I'm not going to answer even that. If, even if I knew the answer, I'm not telling you. Our question of the day. What will be the biggest in-game difference this us? year for Baylor and BYU in the contest slated for Saturday night? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. <laughs> this is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At the Terminator answers on Twitter, the rush attack and defense for BYU. BYU only had 67 rushing yards last year against mm-hmm. Baylor. Yep. And that was, as you pointed out, with Jaron Hall's 56-yard run. Five sacks. Five sacks allowed. Yep. Baylor went for 303 rushing yards. So I think we're all in agreement there that uh, Baylor will not run for 300 plus, and BYU will not be held to only 67 rush yards. I need to see 150 from BYU for to me to, for a chance to win. You got to run for 150. I mean, unless you like plus three in turnover margin. There are exceptions, of course, to that. Okay, coming up tonight, 13th ranked women's soccer hosts Arkansas Southfield. This is a big game. Watch it on BYU TV or listen on the BYU radio app. Push to 10 Eastern, as Spencer mentioned, because of heat. They're trying to just cool it down a little bit. All right, up next on BYU Sports Nation, maybe the smartest students on campus currently. They're competing in the Collegiate Quiz Bowl. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life 
when you live at TRIO. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TRIOORUM.com. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. People have been telling me what I could do and couldn't do. I've always listened to them, believed in what they said. I don't want to do that anymore. In this lifetime, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. Hey, what are you doing? You'll treat me like your brother. You were born to wear that jacket. You ready, champ? I've been ready for this my whole life. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. We are live in Studio C. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. Well, it's Manning Week, apparently, at BYU, as yesterday at Eli's Place with Jim McMahon and Ty Detmer debuted. And coming up tomorrow on NBC, the College Bowl with Peyton and Cooper Manning features... The BYU College Bowl quiz team. How about that? Uh, really cool. Earlier this morning, we had a chance to speak with two members of that team, Ben Potter and Franny King, who will help anchor the team as they take on Washington, future Big 12 opponent maybe. <laughs> Tomorrow, here is our Come conversation. On. Two members of Team BYU on the Peyton Manning College Bowl trivia show with us here in Studio B. Uh, first of all, Congratulations on being selected for uh, such a prestigious event. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, ben Potter and Francis Franny King, great to have you here in uh, Studio C. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks okay. for having us. How in the world did this even come about? How did, how did you get the invitation and the opportunity to do this? Uh, so we're a part of the Quiz Bowl team here at BYU. We um, you know, practice every week and have competitions from time to time. So they reached out to us through that and uh, told us about the show and Asked if we were interested, and obviously we were. It was it was an awesome opportunity. I was going to say, how many milliseconds did it take you to <laughs> accept this invite? Because this is a big deal on NBC tomorrow. Definitely, yeah. It was. I was super excited. I was the one that got the call, and I was freaking out. Obviously, we didn't know if we were actually going to make it on the show, but we were very excited. Yeah. And how do you practice quiz bowl, Franny? What what is a practice like for the quiz bowl team? So we used to meet together in the Mazer building, but these days we gather on Zoom and we pull up a packet, someone decides that they want to read it, and then we split into two teams. We pull up buzzin.live, <laughs> and everyone, you know, buzzes in on their phone when they know the answer to a question. Now, is it Slumdog Millionaire style where it's like, hopefully my life experience has given me some of these answers, or is it like there's a range of topics that you can sort of study and have a little semblance of what's going on here? How does that work? I feel that Quiz Bowl requires studying for quiz bowl as opposed to just drawing in your life experience of course that comes into play and that can help you but quiz bowl requires a specific kind of preparation okay but, and how do you specify that because it feels like uh, i mean are there a range of topics they give you and then you study off that because it feels like oh you can have any question about any topic yeah it kind of is um but it's generally stuff that you'll learn in school so like we kind of we kind of have our own specialties, you know, just what interests us. We have someone who loves history. I study a lot of literature. Um, and then we're both biology majors or microbiology majors. So, like, we, we kind of are well-rounded, and we just study what we would learn in school. 
You can't have like a sports nerd on the team because oh, that's only one category. Need oh, one. you need one. <laughs> oh. you, need, you need a sports nerd. <laughs> okay. At a minimum. Okay, one. <laughs> okay. So maybe one of us, if we were an undergrad, could qualify. Yeah. <laughs> and a microbiology major, for that matter. That's <laughs> never gonna, never gonna happen. We did broadcasting. Yeah. We didn't even have any science and math. <laughs> ben that's Potter and Franny King with us on BYU Sports Nation. I think everybody wants to know how are the Mannings behind the scenes as you do and com and compete in a show like this. Uh, they're awesome. They was, yeah. They're such cool people, super nice, super genuine. Um, and for me personally, I grew up in Colorado, and so I was in high school during the glory days when Peyton Manning was, was leading our team. So he's my favorite football player of all time. So it was a huge opportunity, uh, a dream come true to meet him. And, uh, yeah, they were uh, super nice. As a Denver guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's awesome. And Cooper Manning, his sense of humor is the same off stage as it is on stage. <laughs> How much interaction did you have with them? Uh, in, in the, was it just like for a few moments when you got to the actual show, or did you have prep with time with them before? How did that work? A few glorious moments offset. They came over <laughs> to talk to us. <laughs> I love that. Uh, that's, uh, hopefully this is more glorious than that. Um, Franny, let's talk about you. You're from Pennsylvania, and you speak a gajillion languages. How many do you speak, and what are they? Well, I speak them at varying levels, but I'd say my Danish is coming along, and uh, I work really hard on my Mandarin. But the other languages, I've just barely started, you know, so I've got a lot of work to do on my Turkish. Turkish? As, as, as do <laughs> most of us. As hey, do most hey, of us. Tell Elijah Bryan, he's a BYU basketball player playing over there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, no, I'm not asking you to talk in Turkish, but you can if you want. Um, and, and that is so impressive. And then you actually worked in China? Yeah, I took a job there when I was 19. It's a, a STEM job where you go to different schools and you, you know, build robots with them. You just bring materials and the kids Super get normal experience it. that we all relate to. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. That's very cool. What a, what a great experience. Okay, so when you're in the heat of competition, obviously nerves are super high. So if and when one of you answers a question wrong on your team. Not saying you ever answered a question wrong, because we have no that idea what's going to happen. Yet. We don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> that happened yet. But if one of you answers a question wrong, how do you handle that emotionally? There's a couple outbursts, <laughs> 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 both in the positive and negative reactions. Um, but yeah, it helped that we, we know each other. We've been competing with each other mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, so there definitely were moments where you're like, oh no, I've made a big mistake. And then your teammates there just be like, it's fine. Yeah. We got the next question. Next question. I was yeah. going to say, in any, in any group you need chemistry. How does a quiz bowl team gain team chemistry? How does that work? We kind of have an awareness of each other's interests. So we kind of lean into the other person and say, this is your time to shine for a certain kind of question. But Yeah, sometimes there'd be a question, and I know that Franny's going to know this, so I just look to her, and she gives me the answer. Or I know Craig's going to know it. So I think it just comes from practicing together. We've been practicing and playing together for like two years now. Two years. Wow. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about this too. When people get uh, nervous, you can get into fight or flight mode and sort of this general knowledge that you, or a very specific thing you may know may escape you, right? How did you keep that under control uh, under the bright lights? Um, I think uh, it kind of brought out the best of us, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like we, um, I guess we were just lucky to, to have that reaction, but when you're in the heat of the moment, I think it made our minds work a little faster. And nice. And it worked out for us, yeah. <laughs> you had the adverse reaction, which can be, <laughs> no, sure. I was honed in. For yeah, sure. I know you can't tell us what happened, per se. That's part of the deal of the contract. Yeah, a little NDA there. But can you give us a tease to help everybody want to watch tomorrow when you take on Team Washington? What are, we, what are we going to experience tomorrow when we watch this? Cosmo will be there. Oh, <laughs> nice! Oh, he's in the he's house. In the house. That's he showed a stamp up. stamp of approval if I ever <laughs> yeah. needed one. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's a super fun show. I think everyone's going to love playing along at home. Um, it's a little more fast-paced than some other quiz shows, so it's, it's really intense, really fun. And who doesn't love the Manning Brothers? Like, getting to see them joke around, that was a lot of fun. Do you have to answer, like, Jeopardy style? What is? No, this no. one's a little different. Just, just a straight answer. Okay. Yeah. This is it's a Manning family TV friendly. Week. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, family friendly. Well, mm -hmm. that's what we go for here, at BYU, <laughs> and uh, BYU. Yeah, this is the Manning Week. We got Eli's places came to campus, right? Released, and then, and then this. It's the uh, Manning Week. It is the Manning Week. Are, are you fun to play uh, games with, like on a you know Sunday night with the fam, or are you too good at that and you dominate? Um, no one, I don't know. Yeah, it'd be best for my <laughs> wife to, to answer that, probably. Is there a game you're not good at? How about that? Um, 
Well, yeah, definitely there are, but uh, we, we do have a few copies of Trivial Pursuit at home that, mm. that I love to break out every now and then. <laughs> what, what are your favorite versions of those? Um, the more recent ones. There's some that are really old and really obscure and all the movies from the 60s and stuff. Yeah. So I like the more recent right. stuff. Yes, okay, <laughs> love it. 9 Eastern, tomorrow, NBC. You can watch our BYU, we're going to call you the BYU Sports Nation quiz bowl team. We're, cool? we're with you on this. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> you wrap us too. Okay. Yeah. Even though you've already done it, like, we're just going to throw our hat in the ring with you guys. Is that something? That's great. I want to be attached to more smart people, so, yeah. We're okay, with you. well, and typically when guests come on the show, uh, we give BYU Sports Nation karma, and then you take that karma and it turns into something great. We've never it, done it in this way. In retrospect. It's already been right? recorded. So, yeah, exactly. For that show, but we can still give you the karma to do whatever you want in future endeavors and opportunities that arise. So we're gonna, we're gonna give you the karma anyway. Is that cool? Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, and Sounds if someone's great. watching that's like, oh, I wanna be on the team of BYU student, how do they yeah. connect with you? Um, so we, um, we have a Facebook page, just BYU Quiz Bowl, that you can look at. We'll post on there about when we're meeting. Uh, we meet every week. And hopefully, yeah, we can get back to meeting in person yeah. now and um, having some fun. Awesome. Ben from Grand Junction, Colorado, and Franny from Milford, Pennsylvania. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for hanging Thanks out. For Thank, on. You. Thank you. Good luck to Ben and Franny tomorrow. Now, here's yeah. hoping, Jerem, they can end a three-game losing streak in football to Washington on all of uh, our behalf, right? Does it count? Three in a row to Washington? Does it count if, if be the, our quiz bowl team beats Washington's yeah. quiz bowl team? Yeah. We'll take any win we can get. I was also I was also thinking about like what would we do if like sports quiz show specifically like yeah there sports, was sports Jeopardy with Dan Patrick sports quiz show like our yeah. BYU Sports Nation quiz team this is what I would propose okay Greg Rubel Ralph Sokolowski 100 I would put you as the third member of that oh, I'm and flattered. I would choose myself as the alternate uh, like a COVID alternate as the alternate yeah. yes is there anybody else that we're overlooking for a potential BYU Sports Nation quiz maybe Duff Tittle. Duff would be a great Duff, one. Duff I would put Duff over me in that group. Okay. 100%. Okay. So yeah. Jeremy and Spencer are the alternates. Yeah. So it's, well, it's Greg, it Ralph, and Duff. Yeah. It. It. Yeah. No. Those. <laughs> those are three great choices. Like one gajillion percent. Fun fact. Sometimes I used to do this more often. I'd record it. I. I figured I would compile it over years and years. I'm telling you about this. And if I don't do it, it's on me. I would literally just jump Greg, like open his door, and be like, Greg, who won the 1978 Tangerine Bowl? You know, I just ask him random questions. He would know. And he's like 100%. Yeah, for Unlike sure. the five times I did it. For sure. Yeah. I had to go head-to-head -head with him in a between-the-line segment way back I then. I know. I was, I was happy that I, I know, didn't that get was my... Difficult. I was happy that, like, it was competitive. Yeah. Okay? That's yeah. How, how's how I was feeling. Oh, uh, Ralph Zobel would be our coach, by the way. Yes, he would. Yeah, Ralph. Good. Love it. He's all the Ralph. Sokolowski, Zobel, all of them. Tune in to BYU Sports Nation game day starting at 8 Eastern time on Saturday night. BYU and Baylor ranked matchup, baby. Two hours plus live from Cougar Canyon and inside the stadium. Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark will join the program. And is BYU truly a Tier 4 team in college football? Here More we importantly, go. what does Tier 4 even mean? That's BYU Sports Nation. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. BYU TV app? 
Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> With a free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Make sure to interact with BYU Sports Nation by following us on the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jeremiah and Spencer. Time to whip it. The Cougar Whip brand presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. I feel like everything should be quiz bowl style after that segment. I guess we're not doing that. Okay. Uh, new team tier rankings are out from Fox Sports' RJ Young as BYU is tier four. With what does that mean? Likes of Florida, Minnesota, and Oklahoma State. What you think? Okay. Hey, if BYU is on the same line as Oklahoma State, maybe the second best team in the Big 12, Minnesota, Florida, just be Utah. Okay. I, I was just wondering how many teams were going to be on these tiers when I first heard about 12 this. ahead of BYU. Yeah, not that many. So I'm, I'm okay with this. Tier 4, it's pretty, pretty solid after one game. Baylor in Tier 2. That means they're a legit national championship, uh, you know, playoff contender. There. So if BYU beats Baylor, do they hop up to Tier 2? According to R.J. Young. Depends how, but yeah, uh, win, man. This is a huge game. We're going in pretty confident against a top 10 team like this. I don't think we've been this confident ever in uh, this situation. So I can't wait for Saturday night. Man. Sorry, for a second I thought you said we haven't been this competent, but it's confident. We haven't even been this confident. We've never been this competent. Well, that too, in uh, <laughs> the approach. <laughs> That's probably fair. We're feeling competent in the run game. Defensively, yes, absolutely. D line's got to show up in a major way. That's a good group. They've got to be a great group. Now you beat Baylor, then things really start to get fun for BYU. Starts to sizzle. Big if. I know. But it would get a lot of fun. Isn't that big of an if? BYU's favorite and ranked team. Yes. Feels like Oklahoma. Feels like Miami-ish. For sure. Big game boomer says Lavelle Edwards Stadium, which I think is going to be a big difference compared to last year for BYU in this Baylor matchup is expected to be the loudest stadium in college football in week two specifically. Ahead of the Swamp and ahead of Kinnick Stadium, which is really loud in Iowa. Do you expect this to be true, Jerem? I do. I think, really? I think BYU fans are going to show up in a major way. Uh, remember Arizona State having like five false start penalties because the fans were crazy and The Rock was doing their thing? This is going that to, was special. This is this is going to happen again, where they are going to affect the game that in a was very special, positive for way. For sure, I I'd probably put BYU at two or three. I think they'll be one of the loudest, but like the swamp, there's just something different. Like first of all, there are twenty thousand more fans. This is a dry the heat crowd, Spence. Okay. I don't know if they understand okay. the difference. Okay. All right, no no humidity involved there. But that's factoring into this. When it's dry air, it just the loud the noise resonates. It was so more. dry. A yeah. woman named, oh, are you still? No, I'd probably, I'd say, I'd probably put the Swamp first. Lavelle or Stadium number two. Gotcha. A woman named Sydney Fields tweeted the following. My best friend just got treated poorly and broke up with her boyfriend. I'm yeah. sorry. And he forgot she's logged into his ESPN, and now she's dropping every player on his fantasy teams and picking up free agents. Wow. Is this an acceptable form of revenge? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, first of all, Shame on what? that dude for treating his girlfriend poorly. Like, I know breakups are hard. Yeah, we don't know what that means exactly. Don't treat her poorly. Yeah. Just, I don't know, try and yeah. handle the breakup a little bit better. Let's be so because she was treated poorly, whatever that means, then yeah, it's probably fair that she goes in and drops his number one overall pick and someone gets lucky and gets uh, to pick that player up on the waiver wire. That's incredible. Okay. This is absolutely acceptable. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. Like, be nice! And then stuff like this won't happen! Be nice! <sighs> BYU Football Clinic Talk is available on the BYU TV app and on demand right now. Gregor Bell, Keenan Peely, Kalani, of course, on the show. Chris Brooks, Deep Blue, Max Chuli in the film room. Check it out right now on the BYU TV app, BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Okay, so we've told you how we feel like the game against Baylor is going to be different for BYU this go around. Now how it will be different for the Bears according to the voice of the Bears, John Morris. Stay with us.
my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realize that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine. Be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. It is BYU Baylor Game Week in Provo, Utah. One day closer, Jerem. Getting some Christopher Nolan uh, Inception. Uh, some, some of those vibes. Begins vibes right Let's there. Let's go. Yeah, the intensity is super high and for good reason. Joining us now to uh, give the Baylor perspective on things and how they might be different this year compared to last year is the voice of the Baylor Bears, John Morris. He's back. Friend of the program. He's back with us. John, great to have you on BYU Sports Nation. How are you? Great to be back with you guys. Looking forward to the game. And that, that music, that's a little intense. Is, yeah. that the, is that the feeling we're getting about this game? I think so. Uh, we've been yeah. talking about it. BYU's only beaten a top 10 team five times ever at the time of the game. And so, yeah, huge opportunity here. But also for Baylor, obviously you have league play. But if you want to compete for a playoff spot, uh, you certainly got to walk in with zero or one losses. So this is a huge game for both. It absolutely is. I, I think it's one of three uh, rank versus rank games uh, in all of college football this weekend. So, and then the late night, uh, you know, Big Twelve uh, after dark is is yes. pretty cool. You know, it's late for us and and not as late for you guys. But I think it's going to get a lot of attention, a lot of eyeballs. There'll be promotion all day long on Saturday for this game. So it, it's a, it's a really good build up for what I think is a really good matchup. Okay, John, we obviously want to do our part and help you in any way that we can. And a big part of that is, I know you're a pro, so you probably don't need some help. But just in case, are there any name pronunciations you need help with on the BYU <laughs> side? Because it's, all, it's always crazy. Yeah. Only about a dozen or so, okay? <laughs> so uh, let's touch base Saturday okay. in the press box. And uh, I've been working on that, looking at it all week. So, I, yes, I do need your help in that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it, it's always fun, right? Uh, especially, you know, the long Polynesian names. They, they're they pretty yeah. – they're more simple than you think. Uh, we got you. We yeah. got you. Let's talk about this matchup because certainly there are several players on both sides who aren't in this game from last year that played a big role, notably the starting running backs and running backs for Baylor, of course, Tyler Ogier for BYU, of course. They're gone, but it still feels like – this is a run versus run defense on both sides of the ball game that will determine how this game goes. How do you feel about it? Does it come down to that? Yeah, yeah I agree with you. You know, just in the trenches, one of those in the trenches, very physical game, uh, which line can dominate the other line. Uh, last year in Waco, that was a huge part of the Baylor win. I think we ran the ball for 303 yards last year and, and really contained Tyler Algier pretty well. Um, I think uh, BYU had 67 total yards rushing last year in that Baylor win in Waco. So that is a uh, key part of the game on Saturday. And I think, uh, you know, new new faces back there. Certainly Tyler Algier is now with the Atlanta Falcons, but uh, Chris Brooks is there, had a real good opener. And for us, we've got several guys that are kind of trying to make that stand as, as the number one back. 
But right now, I think you're going to get three or four different backs from Baylor. John, we've been talking about uh, the late night window, and certainly, um, I mean, it's it, Big 12 after dark, as you said, is, is a lot of fun. How much of a difference do you feel like that game time, the location, is going to make an impact on, on how this game plays out compared to the afternoon in Waco last year? Well, to me, those are two different things. Game time is one thing. Uh, location is a, is a huge factor because you remember uh, we had a great crowd. It was a beautiful day, just perfect weather, mid-afternoon game here in Waco last year. This is late night when our guys have to sit around the hotel all day, a long day out there. And uh, sometimes that's a factor. I think coaches would tell you they want to play as early as they can on the road and not have to sit around and, and keep the guys occupied all day. And then there's your crowd, which I understand is just terrific at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. So we got to contend with that also. So uh, it, it's going to be tough. Baylor has a tough road schedule this year. We play in Provo. Later, we'll play in Ames. We'll play in Norman. We'll play in Austin. So a really tough road schedule. And this is the first test for some guys who maybe haven't been in that kind of environment before. Yeah, well, notably, uh, Blake Shapin. He, he, he's played in big games, no doubt about it. Uh, big 12 championship, bowl game. This, this kind of feels like the first hostile road environment that Blake has played in. Uh, why do you feel like he's ready for that challenge? Boy, he's just, it's just his personality. You know, it's just his makeup. He is he is a really cool customer back there. Uh, you know, he's a first time, you know, full full time starter for us. He did start two games last year, but came into this year as our number one quarterback. And he's just handled it so well. And he he just has the uh, personality and the makeup that I think, you know, it won't the stage won't be too big for him. So I, I really don't have any concerns about that just because I, I have complete faith in him. Now, the BYU defense, that's a different story coming after him. But just personality wise, I think he'll be able to handle it. Do you expect Dylan Doyle to have two of the three of the following, a rushing or receiving TD and sack like he had all three last year? Oh, man, is that a bingo game we're going to play, you know? <laughs> Can he get three of these again? Uh, I, I wouldn't have expected that last year, uh, but it happened. And to be completely honest with you, I've seen no signs. Well, I'll take that back. Dylan Doyle came in in short yardage situation last week in the win over Albany as a fullback. So I've seen that, and that could happen again. Uh, but to think that he could, you know, maybe be our leading tackler and rush for a touchdown and, run, and catch a touchdown pass, I don't think I could predict that. But uh, maybe it's in there. I, th I think you will see him on short yardage uh, as a fullback on offense. BYU comes into this game uh, and put what you stock you will into lines and experts as a three to four point favorite. And so we're just like, wait a second. Baylor's number nine, BYU's number 21. We know the location's probable, but BYU's the favorite in this game. Does Baylor feel like they're coming in as the underdog? I don't know, but I would guess our coaches would use that to their benefit, right? Saying, come on, you're getting disrespected. You know, you're an underdog going into this game. So it, whatever works, whatever the coaches will use, whatever works. Yeah. Um, I, I would say to me, uh, you know, that's not a surprise, really. What do, you, what do you get, three points for home field advantage? Typically. So that means it's basically a pick em game or, you know, or BYU by one. So I, I don't deal much in that or don't spend much time thinking about it. I, I think it's going to be a great matchup. I think it's two really good teams, really physical teams, two top 25 teams squaring off. So, you know, let's kick it off and see how things play out. Uh, Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark has said, uh, you know, he's open for business as it relates to expansion. He was asked about it when he visited Cincinnati. He all but targeted what we think he was talking about, Oregon perhaps, uh, who's probably eyeing the Big 10 as well. What are your thoughts on Big 12 expansion? Are you hoping the league does expand in the future? Well, uh, you'll be surprised to know that's a little above my pay grade. Nobody's asking my opinion. <laughs> John, no one's watching that. this show. It's just us. <laughs> okay, just us talking. <laughs> Uh, I, I like Brett Yormark. I like that he is aggressively, uh, you know, running our conference now. You know, he's not passively standing behind and standing back and seeing what happens. Uh, I like that. I think that's a new Big 12 with Brett Yormark in charge. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. I, I uh, kind of trust him implicitly. You know, even though I don't know him, haven't known him that long since the middle of July was the first time I met him. But I really trust him and the decisions he's uh, already made and about to make. 
And so I think, you know, I, I think he's very smart also. You know, he's not going to drop that nugget, you know, about expanding West and, you know, giving some, giving some hints on who it might be unless he wants to, you know, he wants to send that message out there. So uh, more power to him. It'll be fun to see how things play out. I'm going to be completely forthright. When you said our conference, it made me feel very happy inside that BYU is now in the Big 12. I'm, feel, I'm feeling good Along vibes with, right yes, now. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay, we'll finish with this, John. Uh, we roll out uh, what we call our completely unbiased Big 12 plus four power rankings every week. Uh, okay. um, and so I, there are a lot of teams there. I'm just going to ask you, what – what are your top five teams in the Big 12 right now, including the new four teams that are coming in? How would you rank those top five teams? Ooh, good question. Um, a little bit tough to do, don't you think, yes. after last week, after the games last week? You know, I think we'll know a lot more after this weekend's uh, round of games. But if you're holding my feet to the fire and uh, saying what are they right now, I'm going to say uh, Baylor, BYU, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. How okay. about that for the top four? Okay. What, what did you say? Yeah. What did you in, say? In that, well, we're going to reveal it next segment. Uh, we got to oh, tease okay. it. But I want to stay tuned. Can I stay on? Yes, with you? yes, you absolutely, can. you can. Yes, absolutely. You can. And John, we have five hours to fill a week. We got to come up with this crazy content. Okay, we just got to do it. That's good stuff. <laughs> I'm glad to be part of your five hours. We're looking yes. forward to the trip to Provo, and uh, I look forward to many more visits in the future. We're really excited about BYU being a part of the Big 12. Fantastic, John. You're a class act. We appreciate your time. We'll see you in Provo. Safe travels to you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. He is at Voice of Bears on Twitter. At what voice what a handle. I like it. Yes. Great guy. Okay, BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. Make your, sure you subscribe to that so you can get the latest, greatest content from BYU Sports Nation and other shows and games on YouTube today. And as promised, our totally unbiased Big 12 plus four power rankings hmm. up next. Did BYU jump up from the number five spot they were in last week? <laughs> Totally unbiased. Nope, we don't care about BYU, BYU or Blue Nation. on this show. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Football in Utah is all about the rivalries. Red, Ooh. quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. From out in America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Tell the hell. You're going to need that when we're done. I heard that. Let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. This is where we dominate. Our playground. Place of business. This is our promised land where we seek to find ourselves, and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Before I was a coach at BYU, or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. That's why BYU football exists is because of the fans. To have a bunch of fans that want to see you be aggressive, I think everybody can live through our 123 guys on the roster and the 11 that are on the field at a time. Really, it all starts and ends with the fans. I was four years old when I left Zambia. My dad was born in Shila in the south of Italy. My mom is from Slovakia. We haven't really talked about it, never, not once. My dad doesn't really talk about his life in Serbia. I just really want to know who he is. And then discover who am I. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Check out BYU Sports Nation On Demand by downloading the free BYU TV and BYU radio app or listen to the podcast, subscribe rate, and review. It is time for our completely unbiased Big 12 
plus four yes. power rankings. The week two poll is fresh off the press, Jerem. And wouldn't you know it. Thank you, Gutenberg. Those BYU Cougars do indeed jump at least one spot after a 50-point oh. magical outburst against South Florida. The Cougars are up to number four. Jerem, uh, we'll, we'll start from... Uh, the bottom and, and work our way to the top. We shall? will? Yeah, why not? Okay. Kansas, number 14. Shocking. No surprise. Kansas. Didn't think that. West Virginia, Texas Tech, Kansas State, and TCU in at number 10. Okay. Number 9, UCF. Yep. Iowa State, the Cyclones at number 8. Cincinnati, tough game, tough loss against Arkansas. They dropped to number 7. Which they're going to be in the top 5 soon enough. Houston drops to number 6 after a weird game, but a win against UTSA. Yep. And Texas is into the top five Texas, at number five. I think Houston should be ahead of Texas. I think we're only putting Texas there because it's Texas. We're, we're doing what every Big 12 team we're doesn't We're trying want to us build to up do. the game this week against Alabama. We don't care about that. Texas is back. They are? Back to what? Uh, they're back to playing a game. Back to eight we'll and five? We love Sark, but uh, okay. And then BYU at four. Yes. We have Baylor at three, Oklahoma okay. State two, Oklahoma one. I could see an argument for Baylor as high as you want him to be on this list. By the way, FBI has Texas at seventh. That's just that's just garbage. Football Power Index has Texas at seven. Massey ratings, they combine stuff. Stats Oklahoma State, easy. yeah, that's right, Abra, uh, as the best team in the league. And then 13 of the top 14 are inside the top 54, by the way. How good is the Big 12? Take that, Mountain West Conference. Okay, okay. Top 44. Oklahoma <laughs> still on top. Uh, who's going to take down Dylan Gabriel and the Sooners? Who's going to take down Dylan Gabriel? Anyone over six feet tall? Wow. Our question of the day. What will be the biggest in-game difference in this year's Baylor-BYU game? We want to hear from you. Our Elite Voice today, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. This is in response, however, to a topic we hit earlier about the red Arkansas rise and snout shirts, Jeremy. <laughs> when we're discussing rise and snout... Uh, automatically it's elite, right? Okay, and do we have any red shirts? At Krantz underscore Mary says, I was given a red work shirt for an event, wore it to the event, and has sat in the back of my closet since. I own nothing else that could even be construed as red. How about that? We're not alone. That's a, that's there are many of you that feel this way. Right Today's there. Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To the Quiz Team homies, also the NFL begins tonight. Can't oh, yeah. Wait. It's back, NFL baby. NFL football tonight. Bills, Rams. Holy cow. Uh, our thanks to today's guests from the Quiz Bowl team and, of course, John Morris, the voice of the Baylor Bears. Sergeant Dennis, we ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Kyle Morrell. We have to do an 84 team because they beat Baylor, right? We'll see you tonight for BYU Women's Soccer at 10 Eastern. Go Cougs.